Welcome to Climate Quickies, bite-sized nuggets of climate goodness from our TEDx London experts in under five minutes. In this week's Climate Curious, we're chatting about everyone's favourite topic, insurance, and how it can be a silver bullet when it comes to slowing down fossil fuel polluters. We're joined by Hilda Flavia Le Cabier and Isabelle Lettier from the Insure Our Future, to tell us about the global week of action they just took part in and why they're calling on insurance companies to immediately stop insuring new fossil fuels and phase out support for existing coal, oil and gas projects. Let's head over to Hilda and Isabel to hear more. Stay curious. Hi, I'm Isabel Eritte. I'm a senior campaigner and organizer at the Sunrise Project and I work on insurance campaigning with a network that's called Insure Our Future. Hi, my name is Hilda. I'm Hilda Flavia Nakobie. I'm a climate activist. I work with Fridays for the Future Uganda. And I'm based in Kampala. The insurance sector is uh, very vital in uh, combating climate change or taking climate action seriously because they have like the upper hand. And you might know that for any project to happen, it needs three things. That is the insurance, which is one of them, then the finance and the permits. So insurance being one of these three vital things that are needed for any project to go on, it has a say in climate action. Because if insurance says no to any fossil fuel project, then that means it cannot go on. So the insurance sector has a a power to either keep us in the climate destruction or save humanity from climate destruction by saying no to fossil fuel projects. Targeting insurance is uh, a climate action because they can help us make uh, sustainable decisions for both the present and the future generation, either by saying uh, no to any fossil fuel project or by investing in a just and equitable and fair transition to renewable energy. So there's many ways to tackle the climate crisis, but changing the insurance industry is really one of the most strategic, powerful and underused approach and strategies in the movements. The fossil fuel insurance industry is very concentrated. Uh, In other words, there's a small number of companies that control most of the markets. So when we move them, we move like and have a huge impact. The insurance campaign has already made uh, new coal plants almost uninsurable and has stopped them from moving ahead. And thanks to the campaigners that have been like pushing the, the coal companies and the insurance to drop it, it's been increasingly difficult for coal companies to get insurance coverage, even for their ongoing activities. Due to the campaign, the impact, 45 global insurance companies that have committed to end or restrict their insurance coverage to coal projects, 26 uh, specifically for tar sands and Arctic uh, oil and gas. And now the aim is really to do the same for conventional oil and gas. We've been able to move 18 big global companies out of like the 50 that we target. And if we're enough people to, to really pressure them, we can definitely do a pivotal change to move the energy transition forward. Insurance can be quite a kind of geeky and niche topic, but basically it's such a powerful lever on like climate action to like really protect our communities and move us on the energy transition we really need. Catastrophes and extreme weather events that are uh, more and more recurring when we're talking about storms, wildfires, flood damages, So the latest data that we have is from 2022, uh, where extreme weather events caused an estimated um, $270 billion USD in damage, which is huge. And from that, approximately half, so around $120 billion USD, were insured. So money paid by insurance companies. And if we're looking um, at the average per year since 2017, Natural catastrophes have cost the industry, the insurance industry, an average of 110 billion um, USD dollars per year. So they're losing tons of money um, because of that. Many insurance companies are actually 
putting the cost over to consumers instead of putting the cost on fossil fuel companies. So they're raising the home insurance prices. They must take the responsibility for the disaster they've helped create and move away from fossil fuels and make polluters pay and that's not communities. To give a more detailed example is uh, ish. right now with the uh, ECO, which is East African Cradle Pipeline Campaign. It has been a campaign that has been ongoing for quite a while, but uh, the project as itself hasn't yet secured insurance. In Uganda, what's happened formed a consortium that is called the Insurance Consortium for Oil and Gas. And this consortium is made up of uh, many insurance companies in Uganda, but these insurance companies are are looking at uh, the short-term gains over the long-term gains, which is, of course, uh, saving humanity or combating the climate crisis, investing in sustainable sectors such as renewable energy, agriculture, tourism. So this has put them at a weighing scale for many Ugandans that have been uh, clients to these sectors. So many of them as rethinking their options, whether they should go on and open up new insurance policies or if their money is being put into such uh, oil projects like the East African Crude Oil Pipeline project. So apart from losing billions of money, they also stand uh, a chance of losing uh, clients because people are understanding what climate change is. They are understanding the effects of these dirty investments where their money is being used even without their consent. So with the campaign, we just held a powerful Global Week of Action that just took place. And uh, there's been over 100 actions that took place in 30 countries, thousands of people joining on uh, five continents, uh, frontline communities that are on the front fronts of the climate crisis, frontline communities that are resisting fossil fuel projects, um, activist groups, NGOs, parents groups, children, like many diverse type of people joined in for direct action, occupation of insurance offices, creative, um, creative actions, um, community sensibilization. Also, like there's been half a million digital actions that were targeted at the insurance uh, company's employees. So a big, big wave of action took place across the globe. And never before had the insurance industry been on the spotlight and targeted this way. Um, and we've already been able to have some wins. So we have Probitas, which is an insurance company in the UK, uh, within the Lloyds of London market, that replied to campaigners and activists saying they would roll out and not support the East African crude oil pipeline. And that's uh, being proposed in Uganda and Tanzania. And also the West Cumbria um, coal mine that's proposed in the UK. There's also been frontline communities uh, from Louisiana and the US that are resisting LNG massive build out uh, projects that had a meeting with Chubb and they're pressuring them to move on their uh, LNG um, policy, the exclusion policy that went super well. So I can't tell you the details, but we have something crunchy and exciting that will be coming up on that soon. And we also have the CEO of Zurich Insurance, um, that's one of the main uh, insurers in Europe that is still supporting oil and gas, uh, that following the pressures and the actions, um, reached out to the campaigners to pro propose them to come sit at the table for a negotiation meeting on their oil and gas uh, policies. People can learn more by visiting the Insure Our Future website, uh, learning about the global corruption, and reading about what role insurance has to play. Thanks for listening to this quickie. This episode was created by our superstar podcast team at Telex London. Until next time, stay curious.